Hello, Hitman fans! The seeker is for the tango musician. That being said, let's proceed. We start with the lawyer disguise. This is Aaron Ford Jr. He works for Dan Yates at the law firm. He is here to deliver some documents to his boss. Hmm, the resemblance is uncanny. If he gets a barcode tattoo on the back of his head and he undergoes penis enlargement surgery, Mr. Ford would look like 47. He was summoned to the villa. Before going up the hill, Mr. Ford will stop at the parking lot tree to admire a bird. That's where he pacify him and steal his clothes. Oh my... Now we go to the party. Next, the tango musician. I'm going to use the seeker to make him leave the stage and go to the bathroom. If any of you Hitman fans know of another way to make the musician leave the stage, please write it down in the comments. Aim higher to compensate for the bullet drop. He will go to the bathroom near the security room. We shall be there waiting. The damnedest thing to be sure. Wow. Huh. He will throw up in here. A few meters away, there is a bodyguard. Let's subdue his ass. We hide the body in here. The bodyguard dropped the keycard and the pistol. We take the keycard and open this door. We go to the security room and disable the surveillance system. He's going to get a serious case of alcohol. We are done here. Let's get out. Now we go to the locker room. There we shall acquire two disguises. In here we find the tactical wetsuit. Outside a mercenary stands guard. We knock him out and take his uniform. Now we go to the atrium. In the atrium, we'll find Corvo Black, Don Yates' fixer. We'll go near him and trigger his routine. Corvo Black is the one under the green marker. Corvo, got a message from the boss. Duty calls. We triggered his routine. He will go one level up and chill in a somewhat secluded place. We'll wait for him there. He has arrived. Make sure no one is looking this way and subdue his gluteus maximus. We hide him in the lilacs and undress him. Don Yates organized the private tour of the winery for Tamara Vidal and Diana Burnwood. Gabriel Vargas, the chief winemaker, was supposed to guide the ladies on the tour, but he is reluctant to do so. It is harvest time, and he cares more about the Malbec than some bullshit private tour his boss organized for his friends. Eh, it doesn't matter. We shall impersonate Gabriel Vargas, and we shall guide the group through the winery ourselves. When I triggered Corvo Black's routine, I also triggered the chief winemakers. He is usually hanging around the production room entrance, but now we'll find him in the grape fields. Turn on this water pump. 
Ramon, a winery worker who is always following Gabriel Vargas, is distracted. We hide him in the nearby crate and steal his clothes. The water pump is still on. Now Gabriel Vargas will be the one distracted. He goes in the same crate. We impersonate Gabriel Vargas. Now we go to the production room entrance. The ladies are already there. Welcome to Vignetta Yates. I'm Gabriel Vargas, chief winemaker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but they're all above your pay grade. We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Follow me. We go inside and present the three stages of wine production. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including a drag-in freezer unit. And last but not least, our great crusher, industrial size for your disposal purposes. Follow me, please. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium. In these spacious tanks, which could easily be able to contain a couple of hundred human bodies, the sugars in the wine are converted to alcohol. This is also where we squeeze the must into a fine juice using our grape presser. Come along. Hey there, big boy. Final stop, the barrel room. Nothing dramatic, just wine biding its time. The vault next door contains our most precious bottles, but the access doors are made from ballistic glass and can only be unlocked from the security room high above our heads. So, unless you're the sparrow, don't get any ideas. Remarkable. The tour has ended, now we wait. There are Providence Heralds attending the party, and Don Yates has invited them to a little gathering in the villa basement. Don Yates will come here to tell the two ladies they are invited as well. Ah, here comes Mr. Yates now. Perfect timing. Oh, almost forgot. Cortazar, please nip down to the wine cellar and tell Mr. Flowers the sommelier. The ladies will follow Don Yates to the Heralds meeting. We continue gathering disguises. Special occasion. Got it, This is the tech room. There are two NPCs here, a winery worker and a gaucho. By turning off the fuse box, we distracted the gaucho. We'll pacify the winery worker first, but we have to be careful. There's a bodyguard walking through the barrel room and he can see what is happening in here. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll wait until he turns the lights back on. Let's try this. We dump both bodies in the tunnel. Now we infiltrate the wine fridge. We need an access dongle. Now follow me. The 
We have the dongle. Using the camera, we access the vent. We are in the wine fridge. The first thing we do is turn the windows opaque. Now we wait for the sommelier and the chief of security to finish their conversation. We'll need three bottles of wine for what happens next. We throw the first bottle to distract the waiter. Five. Wow. See what the hell that was. No problem. We throw the second bottle to knock out the sommelier. We use the third bottle to knock out the waiter. The code is 1945, the last year of the Second World War and the year the Grand Paladin was produced. We have the bottle of wine Don Yates requested for the meeting with the Heralds. We stay here for a while and wait for Cortazar, the chief of security. Sir. I present to you the 1945 Grand Paladin. Huh. Somehow I thought it'd be bigger. Come on, flowers. Guests are waiting. I am not going to use the 1945 Grand Paladin to crack Cortazar's head. He'll have to settle for this bottle of ordinary Malbec. Let's drag the body out of sight. Here is fine. Now we go to the Herald's meeting. Place the bottle of 1945 Grand Paladin on the table. The nervous system. Effectively... Now we wait for about 5 minutes until the meeting dissolves and the Heralds get up from the table. Put her down. Escort Miss Burnwood to my office. I'll join you shortly. Right. Move it. Let's go. Here's to loyalty. To loyalty. The meeting is over. Time to acquire a herald disguise and complete the challenge, the hidden hand. Drop a weapon in front of this bodyguard. We need him to go away. The heralds will get out of the room through here. The last one of the group is a male. Good. As you know, 47 cannot wear women's clothing. We have to take care of the bodyguard we sent away. If we don't, he will exit the room through the same door as the heralds and he will see the unconscious body. We drag him out of sight. We'll leave him on these stairs. Now we go up to the first floor of the villa to liberate Diana and eliminate Don Cojones. And to acquire 47's classic suit with gloves. You can wear the classic suit with gloves only after you follow to the end the mission stories, the tour, and the closing statement. That means you have to make the tour happen so that the ladies can get to the battle room, you have to bring the 1945 Grand Paladin to the villa basement, witness the murder of Tamara Vidal and the kidnapping of Diana, then pacify the mercenaries guarding Diana, wait for Don Cojones, eliminate him, hide the body, and then, and only then, you are allowed to wear the suit. I'm going to drag this guy a bit to allow the doors to close.
Let's drag this guy out of sight. We disguise 47 as a guard, then we go and talk to Diana. Good. I was beginning to worry. Were you? No. Listen up, 47. Yates will be here shortly. He'll have his thug Cortazar do his dirty work, but he won't pass up on the chance for a good gloat and a monologue. So, private space? Kill room decor? Exactly. We won't get another shot at this. Now sit down and blend in. When I provide a distraction, you just be ready to move. Corvo, pick up your damn phone. Plan B is a go. I repeat, plan B is a go. Start prepping a crime scene, like we discussed. Don Cojones came accompanied by a mercenary. First, we pacified the mercenary. Just improvise. We hide the body and then the suit will become available. Well done, 47. Better get rid of the body. It won't be long before they come looking. When you're done, meet me on the dance floor. Oh, and then... I'll exit the mission at the wheel of Don Yates' car. I need the keys. There's nothing more to do in the villa. Let's get out of here. One disguise remaining, the Asado Chef disguise. We have to go to the Asado Fire Pit. We go near the Losa brothers to trigger their routine. Tell me you, Tell me you didn't forget the Asado. Miguel is upset because Pablo lost the torch for lighting the Asado Fire Pit. After a brief conversation, Pablo will go to the villa entrance to pick up another torch. He will be distracted by the three NPCs near the red van and he will stop to entertain the group with his stories. We are going to start luring NPCs one by one away from the group, until Pablo will have no one to talk to. And when he finally goes to the back of the red van to pick up a torch, we'll distract him as well. There he is. We turn on the nearby water pump and start luring NPCs. We hide him in the lilacs. The water pump is still on. Another NPC from the group will be distracted. We hide her in the lilacs. The water pump is still on. Let's see who will be distracted this time. Pablo is walking towards the torches. I think he will be the one who will be distracted next. We disguise 47 as an Asado chef and we complete the challenge, the famous Losa Brothers. I'll exit the mission using Don Yeats' car. If you remember, I took the keys from the villa earlier. Now I say goodbye. And until next time, don't forget to have fun.